what I do on the guitar has uh, very little to do with what other people do on the guitar. And I have a basic mechanical knowledge of the operation of the instrument, and I got an imagination. And when the time comes up in the song to play a solo, it's me against the laws of nature. I don't know what I'm going to play. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know roughly how long I have to do it. And it's a game where you have a piece of time and you get to decorate it. And depending on how intuitive the rhythm section is, it's backing you up. You can do things that are literally impossible to imagine sitting here. But you can see them performed uh, before your very eyes in a live performance situation. So every night then is spontaneous for you, huh? Absolutely. It keeps it fun? Well, think of it the other way. You know, what if you had to play exactly the same notes every night? Isn't that like punching a clock? Mm hmm Well, who needs that crap? It's so refreshing to hear somebody talk like that. Well, most people won't take that chance because I'll take the chance to go out there and make a mistake. I will take that chance for the privilege of doing something unique, one time only, live in front of an audience. Who are your guitar heroes? Well, today my favorite is Alan Holdsworth. Uh, but when I first started playing, um, I like Johnny Guitar Watson, Clarence Gatemouth Brown, and Guitar Slim. And the style that I play right now probably is more lin linearly derived from what Guitar Slim used to do than anything else. I'm a person who uh, likes to do what he wants to do and has worked at it for 20 years and can generally do what he wants to do, whether people like it or not. And what I do is designed for people who like it, not for people who don't and I have no desire to inflict it on people who don't want to consume it. And I'm committed to turning out as much of it as possible for the people who like it. It's there if you like it. If you don't like it, there's all those other names on the list. What a great attitude. That's neat. Do it's you called rational thinking. <laughs> so few people be, seem to be able to do it. I'm easily influenced by things I hate. There's more stuff that I hate than stuff that I like. Progressive rock is anything that doesn't sound like regular rock. Regular rock is everything that sounds like itself. And he says, hi, Frank, I'd like to introduce you to John Lennon. And the first thing he said to me is, you're not as ugly as I thought you'd be. Which leads me to wonder about the strength of his glasses, because uh, I'm as ugly as uh, I ever was. I'm just as ugly now as I was then. And it's a great credit to Mr. Lennon that he wasn't shocked by all of this. What do you think it'll take to uh to get us back to a point where music is music and experimental and people are willing to take chances? Well, it's not going to happen. Really? I mean, yeah, that's I think, sad. Well, that's, that's a frightening thought. Tough tuckus. The damage has been done. There's very few people who ever went into pop music who did it because they went into it as an art form. They did it because they wanted to be a star. There is a strong desire to be famous, to be rich. Well, you know, when I travel around the world with my rock and roll band, you know, I go to a lot of places all over, you see, and if you have the choice between staying in a hotel room or going to a discotheque, you usually go to a discotheque, you see. And it's my observation that they're just about the same all over the world. It fulfills its function and is a necessary tool of the disco industry. Now, the disco industry has nothing to do with music, and it has nothing to do with dancing, but it do, does have something to do with getting lonely people together in an environment where they can sort of make friends with each other. You can beg the issue and say that, yeah, well, if there's notes involved in it. Yeah, sure, you can tap your foot to it, but let's be realistic. What is it all for? I think just about any kind of music at high amplitude with the bass end jacked up is going to do something to your body. 500 cycles, which is in the uh, lower portion of the mid-range, uh, I have a deficiency, which means that, that my ear is not sensitive to 500 cycles on this side. Oh, I see. That's from somebody else's instrument on that side of the stage hitting my head. It's probably the bass. It was the attack of the bass. Uh, I had a birthday yesterday. I was 36 years old. I got it together today, boy. Well, there are a number of reasons why I would recommend that members of my rocking teenage combo don't use drugs. The first is unemployment. <laughs> because if there's one thing that police around the world like to do, is cause rampant unemployment of musicians by arresting them and taking them away for using chemicals which somebody has claimed at one time or another is going to be illegal, you see. Mm -hmm. And I do not like the idea of having law enforcement agencies impinging on my musical career by virtue of the fact that they will remove a necessary member of my group for using a chemical. I don't use it. You couldn't just stand there and play. You had to invent something that was interesting for those five people. So we would do stuff like 
go out and sit in the audience with them. <laughs> just leave the instruments on stage and sit there and talk to them for an hour and a half. Right. Go, go downstairs to the cafe, go go and get them a cup of coffee. This is your show. We're going to entertain you, you know. So we we go down and get a little napkin over the arm and come back up and you know give them something. Uh, sometimes it'd be five, ten people come in the audience. We'd say, Hey, how would you guys like to do the show for us? We'd give them the instruments. We'd sit That's in the crazy. audience. That's crazy. The oldest one is Moon. And then there's Dweezil, and then there's Amit, and then there's Diva. The youngest one is seven months, the oldest one is 12. One day you get an idea for a name, and next thing you know, there's a child, and you stick it on there. I think that they like him pretty well. I haven't been able to discuss it thoroughly with Diva yet, but nobody else has uh, opted for a change, and they've all had the chance to. I've told them that it doesn't cost very much to have it modified. Well, they like me, you know. No reason why they shouldn't. I'm a good dad. They don't see me a lot, but... Uh, when they see me, we have a good time. First of all, I treat them like people, and I have uh, interesting conversations with them. And uh, I play with them. You know, sometimes they want to erase little cars around on the floor. Sure, what the hey, you know. <laughs> and a lot of people know my name and have never heard what I do. I have no idea what I do. And usually when my name is mentioned, it's mentioned in a uh, negative or derogatory way because I'm a convenient kind of a villainous looking kind of individual to toss in there to hold up as the, the negative. See, there's these great groups over here and then there's him. I always thought that uh, the manner in which I earn my living was something that I wouldn't wish to inflict on anyone else. But if they want to be in show business, no problem. You want to be in show business? Here it is. I was never interested in being uh, like Perry Como. I'm not trying to impugn Perry because the guy does look good in an alpaca sweater, especially Christmas time, you have to admit it. But <laughs> I don't think that my real calling in life is to do that other sort of thing. Well, some people do, but uh, there are other people who think that I'm uh, the scum of the earth. <laughs> I'm just a guy trying to earn a living and do his work and doesn't want to have people bothering him. I don't care whether they watch what comes out uh, and I don't even care whether they listen to what comes out. I'm concerned with getting it out. Just giving people the option of something other than the norm of American entertainment. You don't think of yourself as a cultural or a pop phenomenon? Well, it just depends on how badly you want to treat the English language. <laughs> you know, I'm not, uh, I may be uh, cultural, I may be pop, and I may be a phenomenon, but to stick them all together and call that the essence of what I am would be a mistake to do. I don't have any children named Rabbit Hutch or Buick either. Not one? <laughs> not one. Cousins, sir? I might have some cousins named Rabbit Hutch. I think I have a cousin named Bob Rabbit Hutch somewhere, but I have no children named Rabbit Hutch or Buick. Actually, he's a rather uh, sports-oriented kind of, you know, aggressive little guy. He's you know. a tough little sucker? He wouldn't take any caca from you. <laughs> oh, right. I like the news because it's the funniest thing that anybody can see. <laughs> I like to watch people lie. Do I have feelings about it? You betcha. But uh, I don't think that it's my place to say anything that could cause any more problems for anybody above and beyond what they've got already. I really don't think that I should uh, run my mouth because everybody else is doing it and I don't think that it's doing any good. You saw part of a movie called Baby Snakes. You saw the song called Baby Snakes from the movie called Baby Snakes, which is coming out in June. It's two hours and 43 minutes long. It has music, animation, and unusual behavior. I don't want to talk about yeah, that. We don't, yeah, we Record companies, yeah. yeah. Is this the same one again? Thank you very much. The reason that you can do anything like that that you want is because some people like to hear flat nines and all that stuff. Well, let's face it, I sit on a toilet seat, and as we discussed earlier, so do you. Well, I think that any artistic decision that is based on whether or not you're going to make money is not really an artistic decision. It's a business decision. I don't hang out with rock and roll musicians. <laughs> I can honestly say that neither of my parents have exhibited any sense of humor whatsoever. Well, my mother a little bit. She likes, she likes jokes about things that happen in the bathroom. It's okay. baffling whenever you find somebody who's smart. It's incredible. What? What? Soon they'll have zoos for such things. Stop laughing. If you wanted to know the answers to any of these questions, you would never get them in an environment like this. You know, a wise man once said, never discuss philosophy or politics in a disco environment. This is just the opinion of an aging buffoon. You know? <laughs>
just think nothing of it. A lot of the things that I put on the album are purely instrumental. And so what are you going to rate for that? Is somebody going to decide, well, let me tell you something about that. Did you know that for years, the trombone glissando was thought of as lewd and vulgar and you could not include it in a classical composition until Schoenberg did in the early part of the century and got horrible reviews because he had a trombone going, ah, like that. That is censorship. Yeah, I thought John Lennon was a very nice person. As far as his talent goes, I was never a Beatles fan. You weren't? No, I wasn't. I can name you three Beatles songs I enjoyed. Paperback Writer, Strawberry Fields Forever, and I Am the Walrus. The rest of them, I didn't like that much. Well, because of the way that it works and because of the way the human hand is constructed, you might say that the guitar is the only instrument that human beings never have mastered yet because there is no one correct way to play it. There have been several people who have mastered the piano through history. But the individual styles or things that you can do with six strings on a guitar, the mathematical possibilities are pretty large. And so um, it's an instrument full of opportunities. I don't conduct them in the same way that a conductor does a symphony orchestra because the, it's a different kind of a thing. But the, uh, the conducting is necessary to make things work right. One of them was a 17-year-old blind keyboard player and the other one was a 20-year-old drummer and they have uh, been practicing you know, the music that I've written. The keyboard player has been playing it since he was nine. So I met them before the show and I invited them to play with us during the show. And uh, it was a big surprise for the audience and for the guys in the band because they came out there and they played unbelievable. Just unbelievable. That was very worthwhile. Well, I don't think that anybody has ever seen the real Frank Zappa, nor would they be interested in seeing a real Frank Zappa, because as I speak to you on television, I am being the Frank Zappa that uh, is desired by the person who is doing this interview. I am the Frank Zappa who accommodates the needs of this particular program, answering the type of Frank Zappa questions that this particular interviewer, giving, given his knowledge of my career, will ask, and then I respond in, an, in a suitable way. Well, it's an accommodation because in order to do uh, press, uh, there's no way that I can sit here and be a normal human being because being interviewed is one of the most abnormal things that you can do to somebody else. It's uh, two steps removed from the Inquisition.